Hello everybody, welcome back to the Bison Track Gear YouTube channel. Today we have a little bit different backdrop. I am at a farm in the middle of nowhere, rural Georgia, and uh, it's absolutely beautiful. You can see we've got the rig back behind us here. Um, here I have a uh, sugar cane mill crush thing from, um, I don't know, I don't know, it's old. That much I do know. Uh, anyways, place is absolutely beautiful. And this is an example of the places that we find as we travel around the United States. There's a cabin here from the 1850s. They actually rent that out like Airbnb or something. And they have some RV spots here. We actually just found this place on uh, Hip Camp, I think is the website. We're traveling from Daytona to Roebling Road Raceway. We just finished up the Daytona 200. We have Weira coming up. And the one downside to this really, really cool spot is that uh, we don't have very good Wi-Fi reception. So I'm taking advantage of the time that I would normally be doing computer work and talking to customers. I'm taking some downtime today to make this video kind of as a public service announcement. So for those of you who don't know, Tasha and myself, our two youngest kids, Carter and Edith, we travel full time in that RV and we make our way all across the United States. Uh, last year in eight months, we visited 44 states. To say that it was grueling and exhausting would be an understatement. However, it's also very, very cool because, you know, we come across stuff like this during our travels and you cannot put a price tag on that. Now, the reason that we travel full time is because we are building our business, Bison Track. Uh, bison is something that we started kind of as a side gig because we liked being at the racetrack. We started that almost four years ago now. And after about a year, it started getting to the point where we realized that we needed to do this full time or hire people to do it for us so that Bison could continue to grow and we didn't cost ourselves uh, in, in terms of reputation and um, customer service, which is very, very important to me. So Tasha and I quit our jobs and we sold our house and got this RV and we've been traveling ever since. And it's been really, really cool. We're coming up on three years in the RV full time and um, we just love it. We love it. Bison continues to grow exponentially every year. And now we have five employees, aside from Tosh and myself, we have five employees and the team is growing, the business grows every month, and we are very, very excited about the direction of Bison. But the reason I'm making this blog today is I want to talk to you about the origins of our products and, well, why it's, uh, it's a good thing. Okay, our products come primarily from Pakistan, especially our leather goods. And frankly speaking, you know, Pakistan, the leather industry in Pakistan, it has a bad reputation. And it's justified in some ways, but in many ways it is not justified. And it's actually very, very sad how the industry got here. So today I am going to talk about the bad reputation that Pakistani leathers have and why it might be time to get over it. Now, if you're a fan of Bison Track, you may have gone to our website, bisontrack.com, and seen the blog that has the same name at bisontrack.com. There's a lot of good blogs there. I would encourage you to go check out our website and, and read some of those. But today, I'm not gonna reference that blog. I'm not even going to read off of a script or bullet points or anything. I'm just gonna sit here on this beautiful dock and I am going to just pour from the pour from the heart. Without further ado, let's talk about the Pakistani leather industry and why you should have a positive outlook on companies that do business with Pakistan. Okay, so before I get too far into this video, I wanna talk first about my relationships with some of my competitors in the industry. Now, I talk regularly to a few different owners of competing companies who also source their goods from Pakistan. And what I can tell you is that everybody's factory experience is a little bit different. Our products are all a little bit different. Um, however, all of us have the same outlook, which is we spec the products ourselves and we created a, a, a formula for our suits, for our gloves, that match our styles, that match our preferences, because there is a trade-off to everything that you do when it comes to a suit and a glove. If you add this feature, the trade-off may come here. And if you omit this feature for uh, you know, the, the sake of avoiding a trade-off, you may be sacrificing some comfort or mobility in this area. There's always a trade-off to everything you do 
in a suit, in a glove when you're designing it. Now, um, like I said, each of us have specced our gear a little bit different, but the one common factor here is that we try to make it as safe and as comfortable as possible, and we have factories that can execute our visions. So our bison suit may be made in the same factory as a competitor. However, uh, if you put our suits, you put our gloves side by side with that competitor, you can't necessarily tell that they came out of the same factory because they are specced differently. Another thing that uh, conversely happens in the industry is you have competitors of ours that do not broadcast that their gear comes from Pakistan. In fact, I would say that some of them go so far as to hide it. If you try to hide the fact that your stuff is coming from Pakistan, for instance, uh, what does that tell the customer about your business and about your products? It says that you don't have faith in the people making your products. It says you don't have faith in the country of origin uh, where your products are coming from. And to me, that's just, like I said, it's frustrating, it's misleading, and it doesn't make any sense. So here we are. If you have been to bisontrack.com, like I said earlier in the video, there is a blog there with this title. And in this video, I'm talking to you guys about this. I gave this whole, uh, you know, lead up as in the intro of the video about how long we've been doing this, how we structured our lives around this business, because I want you to know this is our livelihood. And I, I feel 100% uh, confidence in our products, in our factory partners, our suppliers, and um, obviously I wouldn't have left a, a, a very stable, very well-paying job. Tasha wouldn't have left a very stable, well-paying job to do this full-time if we didn't have the utmost confidence in what we are doing. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and dive into why the Pakistani leather industry has a bad reputation um, in and of itself. I mean, what started down this road? Now, the Pakistani leather industry is not something new. This has been um, the central focal point of uh, Silcot for, I mean, years and years. It started in the 1950s, and now it's grown into a billion dollar industry uh, in, in terms of exports in Pakistan. And when you look at the exchange rate of the, uh, the dollar to uh, Pakistani currency, like rupee, I mean, uh, there's a huge disparity, which means that um, the Pakistanis can play a numbers game. They can sell actually very few items to the United States and make pretty good money on them. While the United States, we get a good discount on a very high quality product. Now, the reason that Pakistani leathers have earned a bad reputation is really based around that. So they don't need to sell a whole lot of stuff and it doesn't need to be great quality. And so what they do, as you may have seen on your social media, is they will message you on Instagram. They'll message you on Facebook, just out of the blue, these Pakistani folks, and they'll say, hey, I wanna sell you a suit for $450. I can put all your logos on it, make it to your measurements, you know, it's gonna be great. And you might bite on that. And then you get the suit and maybe it's not what you expected. In my case, my suit was made with very, very thin leather. It's made with very poor padding. It did not fit me, <laughs> so we were 0 for 3. I still tried to ride in it, I crashed, and I got myself hurt. And I've told this story several times, but that's how Bison started. Uh, that $450, I just, I just threw, it in the, threw it in the drain because there was nobody I could go to and say, hey, I'm having fitment issues in all these areas, or um, hey, the leather is not great, or my padding is gonna get me hurt. Uh, there's nobody I could go to. The Pakistani guy sold me the, the item and then he was gone. And that happens to a lot of people. Another reason that these, these companies have a bad reputation is uh, the quality of the goods themselves. Like I just said, I got hurt. You know, it was, uh, it was a situation that was completely avoidable if the suit would have just been made with the proper materials. So what you have is a lot of knockoff materials in Pakistan. When I first started this company, I met with a gentleman at the Dallas Marriott, downtown Dallas. And he was from Pakistan. He brought in a whole case of parts and pieces and components for the suits and gloves that we were looking to build with them. So he laid everything out on the table and we had in a pile, we had a bunch of zippers, metal zippers in all different sizes and plastic zippers in all different sizes. And there were three of each. And I said, why are there three of each zipper? And he said, well, you have your genuine YKK, you have your Chinese YKK knockoff, and then you have a Pakistani YKK imitation, and they range in price from highest to middle to lowest. Which one would you like on your gear? And I just pushed the imitations aside, and I said, okay, well, I want the YKKs, 
you know, the genuine ones. By the way, can you show me some documentation proving that these are the genuine article? In most cases, that doesn't happen. Um, a manufacturer such as myself or a, 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 a retailer, we will say, hey, uh, I want this suit made with YKK zippers. And they will make them with YKK zippers, but they're not the genuine article. And so you have zippers that blow up and fail after just a couple uses. Your Kevlar material on your stretch areas of your suit and on, of your gloves, uh, they may not be the genuine Swiss Keprotec Kevlar. Uh, it may be a knockoff. And these are the, th the items that all add up to make a big difference. These little things here and there add up to make a big difference. The leather thickness that you specify, how do you know that you're getting that thickness of leather? In my case, I took my suit right out of the box, my first custom suit, and I knew it was too light and too flimsy. It was not 1.2, 1.3 millimeter cowhide. It was really more like one millimeter. And I found that out when I crashed it. These are the things that uh, the, the Pakistani guys that are hawking this stuff on social media, they'll try to sneak these things by and save a buck here, save a buck there, and pass them off as genuine articles, pass them off as something they're not. And it's not until it's too late does the customer find out. And then they don't have any recourse to go back and get uh, any sort of a refund or um, you know any, any sort of, of assistance on the customer service side, obviously that is just gone, it's out the window. So when you're talking about a company like Bison, you know, doing business with us, you're protected by a fitment guarantee, you're protected by a two year uh, limited warranty. You know, you, you have fallback in terms of repercussions if, if things don't work out for you. The, the positives of the Pakistani leather industry is that these folks are very, very good craftsmen. And that goes all the way to the lowest of levels. I have done video tours with, with uh, people in Pakistan, you know, we, we use WhatsApp a lot. I've been given factory tours of a garage, you know, with a single sewing machine, a bunch of hides in the corner and one light hanging in the corner, you know, and that's that guy's factory. And uh, he may be very proud of it, but it looks terrible. I can't imagine, you know, wearing gear that comes out of that. That being said, that guy make, may make a really good, safe motorcycle suit or jacket. Conversely, there are very beautiful, huge, modern, western looking factories that um, we have done business with in the past that frankly could not make a great race suit. They may make a great handbag or a great fashion jacket or whatever, but they couldn't make a race suit to save their lives. And uh, we just stopped doing business with those folks pretty quickly and stuck to our guns. We have a very great re working relationship with the factory. We're very honored and blessed to have that because a lot of our competitors, if I'm, if I'm speaking uh, bluntly, they don't have that consistency. Our factory feels the same that, that we do. When they build something, it has to be as safe as possible. It has to look as good as possible, it has to be comfortable, and it has to fit right. And if it doesn't, then they help us take care of that situation with the customer. We're not left holding the bag. So we're very fortunate for that. But big, beautiful facilities, they're not always what they're cracked up to be. And the guy in the dirt floor garage may make a very, very good suit too. The reason that there are so many, so many of these companies in Pakistan is their spinoffs. And I've seen this firsthand because I will be talking to a representative from a factory, uh, let's say a designer, and talking to that person about designs. And one day I, I was talking to this gentleman that I had a very good working relationship with at our factory. And he said, listen, uh, we're gonna have a delay because we're not going to be building these articles out of the same factory. We're going to be building them out of a different factory. And I said, what? Well, oh, that doesn't make any sense because you're employed by this factory, this supplier of ours. He says, no, not anymore. I actually left, I've started my own company and now you can just do business with me directly. And I said, oh, hold on, that, <laughs> I don't wanna do that. I have a relationship with the factory, not just you. Then it turned out to be, he was trying to pull us into his own deal. I talked to the factory. And, and started working with a different manager. Um, and so you see that, you see these spin-offs occur. And I still keep in touch with that guy. And actually his company over the past couple years has been doing better and better. Uh, I'm very impressed with what he's done. But uh, that being said, he did leave a factory that I had a great working relationship and tried to pull me along and, and take me as a customer. So uh, I'm not doing business with him, but I do keep in touch with him. And we're still with the same factory. You know, I know what I get with them. So there is something to be said for loyalty, in my opinion.
Now let's talk about uh, why I don't do business in the United States. Why aren't these suits made in the United States or made in Italy? A lot of people ask us that, you know, and uh, it's kind of funny. People will ask me sometimes, Where are your, where's your stuff made? You know, they don't even look at it yet. They haven't talked to me yet. It's just the first question. Where does your gear come from? And I'll say, uh, Wichita, Kansas, here in the United States. They say, really? I say, yeah. And I'm like, wow, that's great. I thought it was made in Pakistan. I say, oh, it's made in Pakistan. We just ship it from Wichita, Kansas. Did that change your outlook on the gear at all? And they're kind of like, oh, I mean, it's nice stuff, but I didn't know it came from Pakistan. <laughs> okay, well, it comes from Wichita. Why is that a question? Why is, why is the country of origin a question? It's a perception thing. And it's based around the fact that this Pakistani industry has garnered a bad reputation by trying to hawk their stuff via social media and trying to cut corners and make knockoff Alpine Stars and Dainese stuff and put that out on the market. Just on a side note, we're talking about knockoff Alpine Stars and Dainese stuff. We see that. And we have factories every single day reach out to us trying to get us to uh, use them as a supplier. And if they send us pictures of Alpine Stars or Dainese stuff, that's obviously a knockoff or any other brand for that matter, then we just stop the conversation right then and there. Uh, it's just not something that we are interested in being involved with. Bison, we have had uh, rip off stuff out there as well. And in more than one case, we've had Instagram pages, for instance, that have said, hey, we make bison and here's our stuff. And they just pull pictures right off of our Instagram and put it on theirs when they have no actual relation to us as a company. So we try to report those as much as we can. Thankfully, we have a very active community of fans and we appreciate anybody that reports that stuff to us because we try to address that right off the bat. Uh, in many cases, they just block us and they continue doing that. So be, be very uh, leery of that stuff. If you see it on Instagram or social media, companies that say that they work with us, uh, probably do not. There's only one that works with us and they do not broadcast their, their bison affiliation. So take that for what it's worth. Okay, so all that aside, and with all that in mind, would you be willing to pay three times the price for a product made in the United States if the quality was equivalent or maybe even a little bit less than something made in Pakistan? Because frankly, this is something that we have talked about as a company. You know, do we try and manufacture in the United States? Because there are some avenues that we could do that through. Uh, however, the price would skyrocket. It would be a lot more money to create that good here in the United States. And frankly, skilled labor here is not what it is in Pakistan when it comes to the leather industry. The workers are just fewer and far in between. And the products that come out of United States factories are a little bit antiquated in terms of um, technology and fit and materials that are used in creating that gear. And again, I'm just speaking from the heart here and I'm not naming any names, but I do want you guys to know that there's a reason that we do business in Pakistan and it's not just to save a buck. The gear is also very, very nice compared to some of the stuff that's coming out of factories in the United States that costs quite a bit more. All right, so just one last thing I want to address is taxes, duties, customs, um, proper permitting to import these goods into the United States. Obviously at Bison, we have all those things in place. We do pay all of our taxes. This is a full-time gig for us. Tasha being a CPA and uh, doing all the taxes for the business means that we are very black and white and uh, we do things by the book. Sometimes you get the little side hustle companies that pop up here and there and uh, that's not always the case. So if that's something that you, know, that, that you wanna consider, Definitely remember that bison, we're all on the up and up and we follow all of our proper taxes and procedures. Um, and, and that's not to take away from anybody that does this part time. Frankly, there are a lot of companies in this industry that pop up and they're here one day, gone the next. You see that a lot. Bison, we're going on four years now. And um, <laughs> just in that four years, I've, I've seen several pop up and then go away, pop up and go away. It's a tough gig to get into. It's a tough gig to sustain because um, you know, there's a lot that goes into making custom gear, making sure it fits and looks proper, and then taking care of people so that the customer service side of things, uh, you, you know, you, you get a good reputation because the good and the bad in this industry both spread like wildfire. So <laughs> you better be on the good, ends of, good end of that. That's the way I look at it. Uh, so that your reputation precedes you when you meet somebody. You want it to be a good reputation. So that's what we've worked for here at Bison. And again, I really think that the quality of our products speak for themselves. Customer service, uh, we, we do our best to be the best in the industry. 
and uh, hopefully you feel that when you place your order with Bison or every time you put your suit or gloves on, you feel that in your products. That there is a lot of love, a lot of heart that's gone into this company, gone into these products, and uh, we're very proud of them. So with all that being said, that's the reason I wanted to make this video today. I hope that I put your mind at ease or answered some of your questions about why the Pakistani leather industry has a bad rep and uh, why you should get over it. So thanks everybody for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. Click the bell for notifications because we always have a lot of videos in the till. I've got some really cool stuff coming out here in the next couple months. So stay tuned for that. And uh, we will see you guys trackside very soon because now the 2022 season is underway and our 2022 tour has officially started. So we'll be leaving Georgia later this week, headed back to Oklahoma. Then we're headed to Coda for uh, MotoGP and the North America Talent Cup. Also Moto America action there. It's gonna be a huge weekend. We're very excited. So take care everybody, safe travels out there and we hope to see you trackside very soon.